At this time, I would like those who are able to, to please stand for the posting of the colors by the Durham Police Department Honor Guard, and Kim Walker will be singing the national anthem. Say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming? Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the Thank you. Please take a seat. Good evening. My name is Mary Ann Bond. I'm a captain with the Durham Police Department, and I want to welcome you to the Durham Police Department Annual Service Award Ceremony. Our Annual Service Award Ceremony falls on the heels of the May 15th Peace Officer Memorial Day and National Police Week, where law enforcement officers who have lost their lives in the line of duty are honored. Tonight, we are here to recognize over 50 community members, non-sworn police employees, and Durham police officers for their dedication and devotion to the safety and protection of others. Their effort to provide excellent service is often with personal sacrifice or in the face of danger and exemplifies the city of Durham's culture of service. The individuals we are honoring tonight were nominated by their peers, supervisors, or members of the community. This is a special night and I would like to thank all of you for being here. At this time, I'd like to acknowledge our special guests and ask that you please stand. Any federal elected officials? Any state elected officials? County elected officials? City elected officials? City and county department heads? Other law enforcement officers? And our executive staff? Thank you all so much for being here.
One final item to mention before we continue is that tonight's ceremony is being televised on the Durham Television Network, and the program will also be rebroadcast at various times over the next several months and will be made available online for, for viewing. And at this time, I invite Chaplain Phil Wiggins to the podium for the invocation. Please join me in prayer. Our gracious God and Father, we thank you so much uh, for the Durham Police Department. And Father, we thank you that uh, they have taken this time to set aside to recognize and honor those that have gone beyond the call of duty in their service. Father, we're thankful for those within the department, those in the community that's going to be recognized tonight. And uh, Father, again, uh, we are so thankful that uh, you have uh, intervened in, in their lives and Father, and touched them and give them the ability to do the things that they do. And we just want to honor you through that tonight. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Chief Smith will now provide some remarks. Good evening. I am both humbled and honored and proud to stand before you tonight on this very special occasion where we get to highlight all is good with our profession in a time when many choose to highlight the bad. And I also want to take a moment to thank any of the media that may be present to cover this event. I proudly extend congratulations to tonight's honorees for their above and beyond public safety contributions. The medals and awards you will see tonight are really symbolic of the humanity you have shown in the service of your community and fellow man. Humanity for some of you meant risking your own life in the face of imminent danger. For other honorees, humani humanity was demonstrated by great sacrifices of personal time and resources. To each of our award recipients, we say thank you. Certainly, it is quite a humbling experience to have served as the interim chief during this transitional time of law enforcement for the Durham Police Department. I'm so very proud of all the officers and non-sworn employees of the department who remain optimistic about the future and committed to the mission to protect and to serve. As many of you know, I will be transitioning into retirement in the coming weeks. The executive command staff will work closely with newly appointed Durham Chief of Police, Sarah Lynn Davis, to set and implement a new course of public safety excellence in partnership with our community. We are honored that Chief Davis was able to alter her schedule this week to be able to join our employee family and the community for this special occasion. She was also willing to give a few remarks tonight. Chief Davis. I wasn't really willing, I was voluntold. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. And congratulations to each service award recipient. I am honored to have the opportunity ad to address you personally tonight, to express my pride and enthusiasm as we celebrate your outstanding contributions to the vitality and safety of the community I will soon call home. First, I salute your service and your sacrifice and encourage you to reflect on the passage from the book, The Nobility of Policing, that is printed inside your program. It speaks to serving others, even in the midst of challenge. So sometime tonight, please take time to read it. Whether a sworn officer, non-sworn employee, family member of a recipient or resident receiving an award, I commend you for choosing to serve the greater good in spite of the many demands on your time and on your emotions. I can certainly relate as a veteran police officer, wife, mother, and civic leader, please stay in the mode of extraordinary as we seek to build on our individual and collective strengths going forward. Secondly, to the employees of the Durham Police Department and to those unable to be here tonight, I look forward to collaborating with you very soon. I am eager to exchange ideas on how we can move the agency forward in efficient and impactful ways internally and among our external stakeholders as well. 
and to my soon-to-be fellow dorm residents, rest assured that I am genuinely committed to the department's mission to work in partnership with the community. I am excited by the many invitations that have been extended to me already from groups and agencies across Durham and the Triangle. In the days and months ahead, I look forward to attending community events, collaborative meetings, and other opportunities that foster stronger relationships. Thank you for your attention tonight, and I again congratulate all of our honorees. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Davis. I will ask Deputy Chief Anthony Marsh and incoming Chief Davis to join me for the presentation of awards, along with the committee members who will be assisting at the awards table. Members of the Executive Command staff will narrate accounts of honorees' extraordinary acts. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jesse Burwell, and I'm an assistant chief for the Durham Police Department over the Operations Support Bureau. And it's, I have the extreme pleasure to present to you tonight the recipients of the Community Services Medal. The Community Services Medal honors Durham Police Department police officers, non-sworn Durham Police Department employees, and members of the general public for service to the community above and beyond the call of duty that promotes public safety. The following recipients will be non-Durham Police Department employees. And before I begin, I want to apologize in advance if I happen to mispronounce anyone's name. That will not be done on purpose. The first honorees or recipients are Wilma Joyce Harris and Jan Cromarty. Wilma Harris was in her car at the intersection of Fayetteville Street and Timothy Street when she saw a man grab a purse from a woman and push her to the ground. The suspect then got on a red bicycle and tried to flee. Mrs. Harris tried to stop the suspect by tapping his bicycle with the front bumper of her car, <laughs> causing him to fall off the bicycle. He got up and continued to try to get away. Uh, Mrs. Harris went to Food Line and alerted an off-duty officer about the robbery. Mr. Cromarty was in the area and confronted the suspect. The suspect tried to hit Mr. Cromarty, but Mr. Cromarty tackled him to the ground and held him until officers arrived. The man was arrested and charged with robbery. The courage and willingness to get involved to help a, few, to help a fellow citizen in her time of need is honorable and commendable. We appreciate and recognize the unselfish acts of Mrs. Wilma Joyce Harris and Mr. Jan Cromarty. <laughs> Mr. Charles Lyons, Durham Housing Authority Resident Safety Coordinator. Charles Lyons has worked closely with the Durham Police Department for many years. He is a strong, persistent advocate for the community policing model and demonstrates those ideals in his personal and professional lives. Charles Lyons is a valuable partner in the annual National Night Out celebration. Without a doubt, because of his leadership at the Durham Housing Authority, National Night Out coordination and implementation with 20 public housing communities runs very smoothly. He genuinely cares for the residents he serves and he has demonstrated outstanding leadership qualities in Durham Housing Authority com communities as he encourages residents and promotes a positive image within these communities. He is a member of numerous advisory boards, including many which focus on youth in our community. He mentors, he mentors youth throughout the city and is a wonderful role model, particularly for young African-American men. Mr. Charles Lyons works tirelessly 
to make life better in the Durham Housing Authority communities and is truly an asset to the city of Durham. <laughs> the Durham Crime Stoppers Board. Board members are as follows. Pat Ellis, Chick Hinton, Danny Lloyd, Cami Michael, Vinny Abrascato, Felix Lee, Don Hodge, Randy Fletcher, Dallas Parks, and Patty Kleininger. Board members Kent Fletcher and Danielle Kaspar were unable to attend tonight. The Durham City County Crime Stoppers Program has served the Durham community for the past 33 years as a civilian nonprofit organization. The program is overseen by a volunteer board of directors comprised of interested members of the community. The Crime Stoppers program, which is based on anonymity, provides cash rewards for information leading to arrests and felony cases. Crime Stoppers has assisted in the identification and apprehension of hundreds of suspects in the past three decades and provides assistance to other local law enforcement agencies. Crime Stoppers board members work closely with other organizations, attend events, and create initiatives to enhance safety in Durham. Crime Stoppers board members serve without pay and are dedicated to the Durham community. The dedication, enthusiasm, and service of the Crime Stoppers board members have made Durham a better community. Cheryl Smith. <laughs> Cheryl Smith is a resident of Franklin Village who has worked tirelessly to improve her community and make it safe. She first became involved with the city at large after the murder of her son. She began to attend community policing and council meetings and became active working with others who, has, who had lost children to crime. She was elected vice president of Franklin Village in 2011, and under her leadership, the following activities have taken place. National Night Out celebrations, North Carolina Food Bank at Franklin Village, and regular resident council meetings. She often takes money from her own pocket to help those in need. Cheryl Smith has pulled together a core group of residents and works alongside the Fl Franklin Village Council President as a liaison between the residents and the owner management company. She is dedicated to community safety and working toward realistic crime reduction strategies. She works with the District 1 commanders and officers, and as a result, crime in the community has been reduced. Ms. Cheryl Smith is a passionate and caring Durham resident whose actions have truly made a positive difference in our community. Mina Hampton and Diane Jones, parents of murdered children. Mina Hampton and Diane Jones are co-leaders of the Durham chapter of Parents of Murdered Children, POMC, which is the only chapter in North Carolina. This organization has been at the forefront working with the Durham Police Department to provide services to families affected by homicides. Although both have lost children to violence, they chose to empower others in similar situations to deal with emotions, questions, and concerns that come with such tragic events. Together they hold monthly meetings, plan fundraisers, participate in vigils, and attend national meetings of POMC. They bring together the families of victims, police officers, and members of the district attorney's office so that the process of dealing with the death of a loved one and the subsequent investigations and court actions can be discussed in an open and safe manner. Ms. Minor Hampton and Ms. Diane Jones 
have donated significant time and effort to POMC. They provide a much needed service for the community and have truly made a difference to families impacted by murder. Okay, the following recipients of the Community Services Medal are Durham Police Department employees. Officers Marquita Gist, Justin Eason, Raji Flippin, Anthony Ramos, Robert Turner, and Stephen Roman. Officer Roman and Officer Gist were unable to attend tonight. In September 2015, officers Gist and Eason responded to check the welfare of a local resident who suffered from a serious illness. She had not been answering the phone and her friends were concerned. Officers Gist and Eason found her very ill and disoriented. They were also quite concerned about her living conditions. As part of her neighborhood part of her neighborhood portfolio exercise, Officer Gist decided to help the resident with some of her needs. Officers Gist and Eason, with, with assistance from Officers Turner, Ramos, Roman, and Flippin, organized their own equipment and dedicated a day off to scrubbing and cleaning the woman's house so it, so it would be ready for her when she got home from the hospital. Officer Gist continued to stay in contact with the woman who told her that her heart was filled with so much joy, love, and compassion for the Durham Police Department for helping her. Officers Gist, Eason, Turner, Ramos, Roman, and Flippin showed true compassion and care for their community. Officer Richard Armstrong. Since being hired by the Durham Police Department, Officer Armstrong, a military veteran, has been a strong advocate for patrol officers to be equipped with emergency tourniquets. He did this because he knows that when seconds matter, as often happens in law enforcement, these small tools had the potential to save the lives of officers and the citizens they serve. Officer Armstrong presented this information in an effort to get funding approved to purchase the tourniquets for all officers. He believes so strongly about this that he used his own time and resources to assemble medical kits, which included tourniquets for each officer on his squad. A short time later, Squad 1D officers used the tourniquets on calls to help save lives. On June 11, 2015, Officer Armstrong used an emergency tourniquet to help a shooting victim who was bleeding heavily from a wound to his femoral artery. Three weeks later, another Squad 1D officer was able to use an emergency tourniquet to help a man bleeding heavily from his brachial artery. Both men recovered from their injuries. As a result of Officer Armstrong's efforts, the police department received approval to use asset forfeiture funds to purchase approximately 380 emergency tour tourniquets for patrol officers. Officer Armstrong's actions have helped save lives and made a true difference in our community. The next recipient is Regina Medina of the Forensic Services Unit. Reg <laughs> Regina Medina spends time volunteer volunteering in many activities, many of which benefit children, senior citizens, and members of the military. She coordinates the Durham Police Department's Toys for Tots program every year, and last year she collected more than 200 toys for the program. Ms. Medina personally buys toys for the program throughout the year. She also collects and passes out Christmas cards to be signed and sent to troops over, overseas. 
Last year, more than 300 cars were signed and sent. Regina Medina is an active volunteer at the Creedmoor Senior Center. She purchases gifts and prizes during the holidays and holds bingo game days. She also coordinates and collects toiletries for people at the Senior Center. She's active at her church and participates in events and fundraisers. It is rare for someone to give so much of their time and resources, but Ms. M but Ms. Medina often does it for people she does not know and will never meet. She is a kind and compassionate person who truly cares about others. Her genuine compassion is contagious and encourages others to participate. She is a remarkable asset to and representative of the Durham Police Department. The following recipients are Corporal Frederick Kearns, Corporal Thomas Scassafava, and Officer William Fleeman. Corporal Kearns, Corporal Scassafava, and Officer Fleeman have assisted unsheltered homeless people in Durham over the, over the last several years and supported Durham's Opening Doors, which is Durham's community-wide initiative to reduce and end homelessness. When the city is contacted by members of the community about unsheltered people, these officers are among the first to go out to find the unsheltered people, to assess their needs, and to offer community assistance. There are frequent participants in care reviews for unsheltered and homeless people, and their input is valuable to other members of the care review team to better understand issues surrounding the homeless population. For the past three years, these officers have helped conduct the annual point in time count on Durham's unsheltered homeless people. In 2014, when the point in time count was canceled due to inclement weather, these officers on their own initiative went out into the community to make con contact with as many unsheltered homeless people as possible to offer assistance and support. We recognize Corporal Kearns, Corporal Scott Safava, and Officer Fleeman for their outstanding outreach to and solicitous care of Durham's homeless people. And the last recipients of the Community Services Medals are Sergeant Vincent Bynum, Sergeant Raul Garcia, Officer Darian Day, Officer Richard Cohn, Officer Andrew Ruther, Officer Leron Thomas, Officer Jacob West, and Officer Michael Hodrick. Sergeant Garcia and Sergeant Garcia and Officers Cone and Thomas were unable to attend the ceremony tonight. Officers from Squad 4C focused on the Southside community during 2015 due to ongoing drug and gang activity. They combined deterrence activities such as foot patrol, license checks, and the mobile command post along with community outreach efforts to address neighborhood quality of life issues and concerns. The officers helped implement an active neighborhood watch group and met regularly with the Southside Outreach Coordinator and neighborhood residents to foster and enhance dialogue between residents and police officers. Officers attended events often on their days off, such as Southside Neighborhood Play Streets, and a community Easter egg hunt in an effort to help revitalize the Southside community. These officers are being recognized for their efforts and dedication to improve the quality of life in the Southside community. Hello. I'm Ed Sarvis, Northside Operations Bureau Commander. 
We will now move to certificates of merit. Certificates of merit are presented for outstanding performance or devotion to duty, possibly involving personal safety. Officer David Kramer. <laughs> Officer David Kramer and other officers were dispatched to a disturbance and stabbing call at 322 Junction Road in July of 2015. When he arrived, he found two men bleeding from wounds. One man was lying in an apartment, unconscious, and bleeding heavily from stab wounds. Officer Kramer, who carried an emergency tourniquet in his duty bag, used the tourniquet on the man's upper arm, which stopped the severe bleeding from the man's brachial artery. Durham County EMS arrived on the scene seconds later and transported the man to the hospital where he underwent treatment of his injuries. Officer Kramer used his training and reacted quickly and calmly under stressful circumstances to save a life. This award is presented in recognition of that outstanding performance. <laughs> Investigator Jason Evans. Investigator Evans is unable to be with us this evening. Lieutenant Joe Kelly will be accepting the award on his behalf. Investigator Jason Evans has been the Durham Police Department's re representative on the United States Marshal Service Joint Fugitive Task Force since April of 2006. Since that time, he has performed in an exemplary manner, and his success rate for locating fugitives is extremely impressive. Investigator Evans' investigations often put him in harm's way because his job is locating fugitives who are wanted for violent crimes. In 2015, Investigator Evans helped apprehend nine fugitives wanted for murder, two wanted for rape, eight wanted for felony assault, and six wanted on robbery charges. Investigator Evans is also very dedicated to the community. He volunteers for the Downtown Senior Citizens Ball for seniors with Alzheimer's. He served food to the community during National Night Out event, and he volunteers once a month to serve food to the homeless at the Urban Ministries. Investigator Evans is truly an asset to the Durham Police Department, the United States Marshal Service, and the Durham community. <laughs> Officer Kamali Jackson. On December 18th of 2014, Officer Kamali Jackson responded to a cardiac arrest call in the Walltown community. Officer Jackson was the first person on the scene and discovered an unresponsive man lying on the sidewalk in front of his home. Officer Jackson administered life-saving CPR until EMS arrived and took over. Due to Officer Jackson being prepared and responding quickly, EMS was able to maintain a heartbeat and transport the 58-year-old man to the hospital for further treatment. Officer Jackson used his training and didn't hesitate under difficult circumstances to save a life. This award is presented in recognition of outstanding performance. <laughs> Master Officer Brandon Parrott. <laughs> Master Officer Parrott is a dedicated officer who has always gone above and beyond in any capacity in which he has served in the Durham Police Department. When he became the Crime Stoppers coordinator, he worked hard to make the organization more effective and efficient. He developed several new methods to publicize wanted persons and the Crime Stoppers program. He implemented the Gun Stoppers program to focus on illegal firearms. He researched ways to better, hand, better handle after hours calls and ones from Spanish speaking callers so that no information was lost. Master Officer Parrott often follows up on Crime Stoppers tips himself and goes out and makes arrests. In addition, Master Officer Parrott has made efforts to teach Crime Stoppers board members more about the criminal justice system and takes them on ride-alongs. Master Officer Parrott is a dedicated and energetic Crime Stoppers coordinator, and he is a professional and positive representative of the Durham Police Department. <laughs> Corporal Robert Andrzejewski and Corporal Charles Fennell. On March 17th of 2015, Corporal Fennell and Corporal Andrew Jeske responded to a call about a man threatening to kill himself near Holloway and Elizabeth Streets. When Corporal Fennell arrived, he found a man standing on the edge of a bridge over a railroad track. The man was crying and said he wanted to kill himself. Corporal Fennell spoke calmly to the man and told him he was there to help him. 
Corporal Andrew Jeske arrived and edged closer and closer to the distraught man as Corporal Fennell continued to speak with him. The man was now sitting on the rail with his feet over the side. Noticing that the man was focused on Corporal Fennell, Corporal Andrew Jeske reached out, grabbed the man, and pulled him to safety. The man was taken to the hospital for treatment. Corporal Fennell and Corporal Andrew Jeske went above and beyond the call of duty that night at grave risk to their lives and personal safety to rescue a stranger. Corporal Frederick Kearns, Officer Jose Montoya, Officer Ryan Harris, Officer Robert Turner, Officer Matthew Davis, Officer Dustin Harris. Officer Davis now works for the Morrisville Police Department, and Officer Dustin Harris now works for the Cary Police Department. Officers Montoya and Dustin Harris responded to a call that a man had drowned his children in an apartment complex lake. Officer Montoya saw an off-duty sheriff's deputy rendering aid to a young child and noticed another toddler lying on the ground, unconscious and not breathing. Officer Montoya immediately began chest compressions. Officer Dustin Harris arrived with a breathing mask and took over chest compressions while Officer Montoya began rescue breathing. Officer Davis assisted with CPR until EMS took over. Meanwhile, Officer Turner and Corporal Kearns responded to a store near the scene where the victim's young brother had approached a citizen for help. Officer Turner talked to the little boy and let him know he was safe. Corporal Kearns and Officer Turner brought a child a drink and a snack while they talked to him and kept him company. Officer Ryan Harris spoke with the father and suspect and kept him calm until investigators arrived. In the course of their, du their duties, these officers did not hesitate to do what was necessary under extraordinarily di difficult circumstances. They showed extreme compassion and true professionalism when it was needed. <laughs> Officer Kevin Geyer, Officer Matthew Garvin, K-9 Officer Kimberly Schooley, and Officer Ryan Harris. On June 17th of 2015, at approximately 4 in the morning, officers responded to a possible robbery in progress at McDonald's on Tower Boulevard. Sergeant Glenn Price and Officers Geyer and Harris arrived on scene to find that all the lights in the building had been turned off. As the officers entered the business, they saw that a female was being held hostage by a man who had his, he had his arm around her neck. The man was threatening to shoot the female employee. As Sergeant Price spoke with the suspect, Officers Geyer, Garvin, Harris, and Schooley acted as cover officers inside the restaurant, and at Sergeant Price's request, they used their flashlights to illuminate the victim and suspect. Sergeant Price continued to speak with the suspect and respectfully pleaded with him to let the victim go. The sus suspect refused, to, refused and told the officers that he was going to shoot and kill her. After several minutes of continued unsuccessful negotiations, Sergeant Price shot the suspect in the jaw, causing the suspect to release the victim. Officers Geyer, Garvin, Harris, and Schooley showed unwavering control and true bravery in a very volatile situation. Their actions helped save the life of a hostage and demonstrated true dedication and professionalism. And now to the police medal. The police medal is presented by the department to community members who apprehend or cause to be apprehended a dangerous person or persons at grave and or imminent danger to themselves or to the community members who perform an act that warrants such recognition. Dylan Blake Evans of Eagle Eye Security. <laughs> On August 24, 2015, Dylan Blake Evans, a security guard with Eagle Eye Security, was off the clock and riding with a coworker to the store when he heard a gunshot in a nearby apartment complex. Thinking of the public safety before his own, he ran toward the apartment complex. He went behind the building in an attempt to locate the suspect, but the suspect saw him and shot Evans twice. One bullet hit him in the head near his eye, the other hit him in the abdomen traveling through his back to his spine. A co-worker found Evans unresponsive and bleeding heavily. 
Evelyn's was taken to the hospital in grave condition. Further investigation determined that Evans had interrupted a home invasion where two occupants of an apartment had been shot at one time by the suspect. Evans lost partial sight in one eye and endured multiple surgeries to his back and left eye. He hopes to one day return to work. Security Officer Evans demonstrated bravery and put the safety of others above his own safety. Good evening, Rick Pendergrass, Assistant Chief, Investigative Services. I'll be presenting the Distinguished Service Medal, Civilian Employee of the Year, Officer of the Year, Purple Heart Medals, and Medals of Valor. The Distinguished Service Medal is presented by a department to sworn or non-sworn employees who apprehend or cause to be apprehended a dangerous person at grave and or imminent danger to the employees or to employees who perform an act that warrants such recognition. Master Officer Douglas Roush. <laughs> On September 3rd, 2015, five teens allegedly committed a series of armed robberies in East Durham. Canine Officer Douglas Roush and his canine Zeus tracked the suspects through woods, tall grass, and creek beds for more than an hour. Master Officer Rouse spotted the suspects on Cheek Road and then were taken into custody. Three handguns, along with some of the victim's property, were recovered. The suspects were charged with multiple counts of robbery, robbery with a dangerous weapon and assault with a deadly weapon inflicting serious injury. Without Master Officer Rouse's determination and commitment to excellence, these individuals would not have been taken into custody as quickly as they were. Master Officer Rouse did not give up and as a result, his actions likely prevented further armed robberies and assaults. This award is being given in recognition of outstanding performance. <laughs> Master Officer Jamie Broadwell. <laughs> On December 7, 2015, Master Officer Broadwell was on his way to work off duty for the Durham Housing Authority when he heard an armed kidnapping call on his radio. Master Officer Broadwell was familiar with the location and able to direct officers to Car Road where the suspect and three victims were located. Master Officer Broadwell initiated a stop of the suspect vehicle and officers were able to rescue the victims and apprehend the suspect without incident. The suspect was in possession of a shotgun which had been used in the kidnapping. Master Officer Broadwell demonstrated great professionalism and leadership throughout this incident, which resulted in the apprehension of a dangerous person while placing himself in grave danger. This award is being given in recognition of outstanding performance. <clears throat> Civilian of the Year, Diana Palladino. Accreditation Manager Diana Palladino joined the Durham Police Department in March 2014 and is overseeing the preparation for the 2016 CALEA reaccreditation process. She has displayed a vast knowledge of more than 300 accreditation standards applicable to the Durham Police Department. Ms. Palladino's focus-driven management enabled the Durham Police Department to have a successful on-site evaluation from CALEA. In addition, Ms. Palladino accomplished the following in 2015 updated and published more than 40 general orders, initiated the SOP restructuring project, which involved meeting with members of several units to evaluate <coughs> current manuals and make such needed updates, <coughs> excuse me, secured funding and oversaw the purchasing and implementation of Power DMS data management system and conducted departmental training on the new system. Ms. Palladino is a valuable asset to the Durham Police Department by demonstrating her exceptional devotion to duty, Ms. Palladino has been selected as the Durham Police Department's 20, 2016 Civilian of the Year. <laughs> Officer of the Year, Officer Richard Armstrong. <clears throat> a 
as we mentioned earlier in the program, Officer Armstrong was the driving force behind the police department receiving approval to use asset forfeiture funds to purchase approximately 380 emergency tourniquets for patrol officers. The use of these tourniquets has already helped save two lives. In addition, Officer Armstrong is one of the hardest working and most proactive officers in the city and has been commended for the quality of his arrests and investigations. One of his arrests was of a man who attempted to rob one bank and was apparently on the way to a second bank when Officer Armstrong apprehended him. Officer Armstrong maintains a professional attitude and has been described by a domestic violence victim as an officer who was patient, supportive, great with children, and able to keep things calm at the scene. Officer Armstrong's actions have helped save lives and have made a true difference in our community. <laughs> Purple Heart Medal. The Purple Heart Medal was earned by an officer who sustains a serious injury while in the line of duty. Investigators Thomas D Douglas and Investigator Juan Valle Avalaris who cannot be here tonight, and Lieutenant Joe Kelly with the Special Operations Division will be at Setman on their behalf. On June, on June 5th, 2015, investigators received a tip that a man <clears throat> was involved in a drug sale in Durham and were told where he could be located along with the description of his vehicle. Investigators conducted a traffic stop on NC 55 Highway in a parking lot of a business. The driver initially stopped, but then put the car in reverse, ran into investigator Valle Avalaris' vehicle, which was directly behind him. He then put the car in drive and attempted to leave the scene, struck investigator Douglas, throwing him to the ground, causing him serious injury. Investigator Valle Avalaris used his damaged vehicle to ram the suspect's vehicle as it sped out of control toward NC-55, which was congested with traffic. As a result, investigator Valle Avalaris suffered a serious shoulder injury which required, required surgery. The man was arrested, found to be in possession of heroin, and the actions of investigator, of investigator Valle Avalaris and Douglas underscore the dangerous nature of police work and the risk that brave men and women of the Durham Police Department endure every day to ensure the safety of their fellow citizens. Medal of Valor. The Medal of Valor is the highest recognition given by the department. It is granted to members who distinguish themselves by gallantry and bravery in an attempt to preserve life or property at clear risk to personal safety. The act must be so conspicuous that it clearly distinguishes the member as one who acted far beyond the call of duty. Investigator Juan Valle Avalaris. Again, Lieutenant Joe Kelly with Special Operations will be accepted on his behalf. In addition to the Purple Heart Medal, Investigator Valle Avalaris is receiving a Medal of Valor for his heroic actions in stopping the suspects out of control vehicle. His actions preserved the lives of not only his fellow investigators, but the lives of the motorists on NC-55. He put himself in clear risk of personal injury by stopping the suspect. However, he put the safety of others before his own and demonstrated true bravery. His actions distinguished him as an officer who acted far above and beyond the call of duty. <clears throat> Sergeant Glenn Price. As we mentioned earlier, Sergeant Glenn Price was able to save the life of a hostage at McDonald's on Tower Boulevard. Sergeant Price spoke with the suspect for several minutes, pleaded with him to let the hostage go. When Sergeant Price realized that the suspect had no intention of releasing the female hostage, he shot the suspect in the jaw, causing him to let the hostage go. Sergeant Price remained calm under very difficult and volatile circumstances and reacted quickly to save the life of an innocent woman. Sergeant Price displayed gallantry and bravery at clear risk to personal safety. His actions distinguished him as an officer who acted far above and beyond the call of duty. <clears throat> Officers Jonathan Fulham, Cornell Richards, Joshua Conser, and Officer Conser is unable to attend the ceremony tonight.
On July 4, 2015, officers Concer, Fulham, and Richards were dispatched to an armed robbery in progress with shots fired at Joy Food Mart 2109 North Roxburgh Street. Officers Concer and Richards arrived within two minutes of dispatch, and Officer Fulham arrived shortly after. Officer Richards reported hearing shots fired from inside the store, and the suspect exited the business still armed with a gun. The suspect pointed the gun at the officers and refused to drop his gun. The suspect fired shots at the officers, and they returned fire. The suspect ran into the roadway, and Officer Fulham fired, causing him to drop to the ground. Officers were told there might be a second suspect in the store. Believing there might be more gunfire, Officer Richards moved the suspect to a safe place so he would not be further injured. When officers went inside the business, they found the clerk had been shot to death. Officers Cosner, Fulham, Richards demonstrated extreme courage while facing imminent peril. These officers displayed gallantry and bravery at clear risk to personal safety. Their actions distinguished them as officers who acted far above and beyond the call of duty. Mm. Can we recognize all the recipients one more time? <laughs> At this time, I will ask Chaplain Captain Phil Wiggins if he'll come for the benediction. Please join me in prayer. Our God and Father, again, we're just uh, so thankful for this service tonight. Father, we thank you for the Durham Police Department and uh, for the men and women, Father, that we've recognized tonight. Uh, Lord, we just pray that you just continue to guide and direct us. Uh, Father, we have a great department here, and we pray for all of our staff and our workers and pray, Father, as well for the citizens within the community, Father, that uh, you'll continue to guide us as we work together and doing our best to serve Durham. They'll be with us in all that we do. In Christ's name I pray, amen. Good evening, everyone. My name is Anthony Marsh. I'm the Deputy Chief for Operation Support Section for the Durham Police Department. <coughs> I'll be giving you closing remarks. I wasn't given a time limit, <laughs> but I did read somewhere that a short speech may not be the best speech, but the best speech is a short one. <laughs> so I'm going to keep true to that theme and move right into this. Uh, let me start by saying that um, I take great pride working with the men and women that we've honored here tonight, as well as the other members of the Durham Police Department, both sworn and non-sworn, and all of our citizen partners. Tonight's ceremony has been nothing short of inspiring. Chris Hemsworth said it best when he said, people who put themselves on the line and sacrifice their own safety for the greater good and for others and anyone in any profession whose concern is the welfare for other people instead of the individual are inspiring and important. I think you would agree with me that we've seen just a few examples of that here tonight. As we celebrate outstanding contributions to public safety tonight, um, it is only fitting and appropriate that we take time to acknowledge the honorable law enforcement career of soon to be retired Deputy Chief Larry C. Smith. Chief Smith, if you would stand and remain standing, please. Chief Smith is a, native of, is a Durham native who has diligently responded to the call of police duty for the past 28 years. He rose through the ranks from Uniform Patrol, Special Operations Division, District 2 Captain, and Assistant Chief of Investigative Services. He was named Deputy Chief of Operations in July of 2012. Chief Smith, on behalf of the Executive Command Staff, the Durham Police Department, all of the employees at the Durham Police Department, and I think I can safely speak for the citizens of Durham in this particular case as well. We are grateful for your willingness to serve as interim chief of police and for your leadership 
during this transitional period in the history of our department and policing in general. I want to take a point of personal privilege and personally thank you for your friendship since I've been on the exec staff and also for your wise counsel. We extend best wishes to you and your family as you retire and we fully anticipate you will continue to protect and serve the community through your active faith life. Congratulations, sir, on an honorably earned and well-deserved retirement. In closing, I would be remiss if I did not also acknowledge the very hard and diligent work of the Service Awards Committee and all of those who rendered various support services to put this event together. Let's give them all a round of applause, please. You will find their names on the back of your programs. To our guests, family members, and the viewing audience on the Durham Television Network, we appreciate your continued support, and we would encourage you to share with others the many great things that are not only happening in Durham, but in the Durham Police Department specifically. The Service Awards Committee invites those in attendance to join all of the award recipients for a reception in the lobby. Again, thank you, and good night.